Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 3, we read, But the Lord is faithful, and He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. Tim Sturby comes to sing, Sheltered in the Arms of God. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search God's holy word, the Bible, in order to find the answers. Question number one, when or what do I say to family who don't want to hear anything about God? Three portions of scripture I want to give to you. First of all, to encourage you to continue to pray. Psalm 27, verse 14, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Very often, a, it is an indication 
of God's Spirit at work within the heart when someone wants to run and doesn't want to hear. It's because there is an inner voice. There is the Spirit of God at work in the heart, and it's just too much for them to hear from the outside and to hear from the inside, and they're saying, be quiet. They cannot qu quieten that inner voice, but they might want to quieten that outer one. I would encourage you to be encouraged that in fact there is something at work, though there seems to be nothing at work. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 7, we read, there is a time to a tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to be silent and a time to speak. I would encourage you that perhaps there is a time to be silent with your family and not to constantly approach them, but to give them some room. And even as you pray, say, Lord, ramp it up. Turn on the burners of your spirit and the work in their heart. Just let it fly. Let the fire burn. And then Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 11. Like apples of gold in settings of silver is a word spoken in right circumstances. Perhaps you've heard the phrase, less is more. Rather than to be constantly approaching them with many words, look for that opportunity and pray for a sensitivity to the Spirit of God that at just the right time, there might be that word. Many times I've sensed that fewer words penetrate to the core of a person's heart much better than many words and just be praying, bathing the whole situation, situation in prayer, but then say, Lord, is this the time? And just plant those words and let them be like apples of gold in settings of silver, that appropriate word at just the right time. Question number two, when we pray for faith to live by, what specifically should we be praying for? I was thrilled to receive this letter and to hear from someone to say, look, you pray for us on the program from time to time. And uh, many times people in their uh, letters, they say, we are praying for faith to live by. Deeply appreciate that. But here is a question. What specifically? I want to give you three, and here they are. Number one, I have a dear friend who sometimes calls me up and prays for me, and he has a number of sayings, and he says, Lord, give the wisdom of Solomon, the patience of Job, the courage of Daniel, and the love of Christ, and there are a few others, I just don't remember them at the moment, but pray that we would have the wisdom of Solomon, the patience of Job, the courage of Daniel, the love of Christ, and that we might ever and always walk in that. Secondly, pray for all who serve, both those who are seen on the broadcast, or broadcast, seen or heard, because we're on TV and radio. Pray for all who serve, those who sing, myself as I speak, and in various others. Some of you call our office and speak with my administrative assistant but pray for all who you are aware of, as well as those who are unseen. And the production of Faith to Live By is a little bit of a, a convoluted thing in that there are pieces that are pre-recorded some months ahead of time, and then there is the uh, putting together of it uh, every second Tuesday evening pray for all who are seen and unseen. I know many who serve behind the scenes, but I also know that there are many who I don't know. There are those who provide closed captioning. There are those who provide in the local television outlets that we use and radio outlets all across the land. There are technicians and pray God's blessing 
upon each and every one, even though I can't list their names or uh, describe anything about them, pray God's blessing upon them. And thirdly, I would encourage you to pray Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 10 to 18. What is that? That is where Paul speaks to the Ephesians about taking up the entire armor of God. And here, Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Pray that faith to live by would be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Pray that we would put on the full armor of God and that we would be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil, realizing that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places, taking up that full armor of God and having done everything to stand firm in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the gospel which was delivered once for all to the saints. And may we proclaim that faithfully. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi Taves comes to sing Jesus, Rock of Ages.
Faith to Live By Resources has just released this brand new CD, Sitting at the Feet of Jesus. What a wonderful place to be for each and every one of us. This CD contains 14 songs featuring the men of Faith to Live By in quartet, in solo work, as well as teaming up in duets. I know you will be blessed and strengthened and encouraged by this, that you'll want to also share it with those round about you. Ask for your free copy, which will be sent, postage paid without any charge whatsoever. Ask for your copy of Sitting at the Feet of Jesus when you write this week to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. You may also reach us by calling our toll-free phone number 1-833-367-3852 or use our website faithtoliveby.ca and the Contact Us feature that is there. And now from this brand new recording, we have the male quartet coming to sing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Four hundred and fifty years before Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, I take you to Nehemiah chapter 1. Here some of the Jews are still in the remnants of the Babylonian captivity, that time when they, because of their own willful rebellion against God, God took them from the land which He had promised to them and led them to under the hand of Moses and Joshua, the land which which was flowing with milk and honey, a good land, a spacious land. But God had warned them, 
And the people had not heeded that warning, and so God had removed them far away. But God is the one who would want to bring the wanderer back. He would want to bring the one who has rebelled back into fellowship and into communion with himself. He would want the wanderer to wander no more. He would want the exile to find a home and a rest in him. I want to especially focus upon Nehemiah chapter 1, but the entire book of Nehemiah and the leadership which he exercised is a exclamation point, focal point of prayer. Nehemiah was a great man of prayer, although most of the reminiscences and the remembrances that we have of him are of his great leadership. The reason why he was a great leader was that he was a great man of prayer. And chapter 1 very fittingly begins the entire book, and it is filled with prayer. But first, the setting is set for us. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now it happened in the month Chislev in the 20th year while I was in Susa, the capital, that Hanani, one of my brothers, and some men from Judah came, and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped and survived the captivity and about Jerusalem. You need to understand that Jerusalem has a place in the heart of the Jew like no other place could possibly have. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, even Jesus, he comes to Jerusalem and he weeps over the city. Nehemiah asks about Jerusalem. He is vitally concerned. They said to me, the remnant there in the province who survived the captivity are in distress and reproach, and the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are burned with fire. There was no security if there was no protection via a firm, solid wall and gates that could close at night in order that the intruder might be kept out. But beyond that, in the Old Testament, walls stand for salvation and gates, they stand for praise. The gates, those were the places which was essentially the city hall. That was where business was done. That was where honor was given to those for whom honor was due. Walls stand for salvation. Gates represent praise. So when the word is given, the walls are broken down, there is no salvation. The gates are burned with fire, there is no praise, there is no honor, most especially to the Lord, whose name was to be right there in Jerusalem. And this is what Nehemiah does. This is his response. When I heard these words, I sat down and wept. It went to the very core of his being. He weeps and mourned for days. And I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And the rest of the chapter, chapter 1, is a prayer. And I read it to you. Hear the prayer of Nehemiah, great man of God. I beseech you. Nehemiah knew where help was to come from, and he goes directly to the source. I beseech you, O Lord God of heaven. And he describes him, the great and awesome God who preserves the covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open to the prayer of your servant, which I am praying before you now. He's asking for grace. He's asking for God's mercy. Day and night, on behalf of the sons of Israel, your servants. Nehemiah wasn't saying, look, I, I want to make a name for myself. Lord, I want your name to be great. I want your name to be exalted. These for whom I am praying, they are yours. They are not mine your servants, confessing the sins of the sons of Israel, which we have sinned against you. I and my father's house have sinned. Nehemiah understood 
that he needed God's grace even as did all of the others. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. He's not pointing fingers at someone else. He's saying we are all in this same situation and predicament together. Lord, we look to you. We eagerly call upon you. And Nehemiah says, remember, what a great thing it is to remind the Lord of what he has promised. Lord, remember the word which you commanded your servant Moses, saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But, but if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, Though those of you who have been scattered were in the remote part of the heavens, I will gather them from there and will bring them to the place where I have chosen to cause my name to dwell. That's Jerusalem. God, Lord, you said you would bring the people back. You said that the wanderer could come home. You said that the prodigal would find a welcome what a beautiful scene. What a beautiful picture that is. They are your servants. They are your people whom you redeemed by your great power and your strong hand. Oh, Lord, I beseech you, may your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and the prayer of your servants who delight to revere your name and make your servant successful today and grant him compassion before this man. Nehemiah was cupbearer to the great king, and he would go before him to make his appeal, but he first of all came to the king of all kings. Do that. When you are in a predicament, when you are in a situation that's way over your head and you need help, come to the king of kings and the Lord of lords and pour out your need before him. Before you talk to anybody else, lay it before the Lord and find that grace, that mercy, that rest in Him. For one, yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 